Part 1. Laying the Foundation A High-Level Look Structure of the Industry There are as many different types of services in the language services industry as there are words in a dictionary. And there are many different types of service providers and other key players as there are sentences written from those words. In this section, we will discuss the various types of key players in the industry, starting with a look at the language services value chain, language services buyers, or LSBs, and moving on to service providers, including multiple language services providers, or MMLSPs, MLSPs, and RMLSPs, single language services providers, SLSPs, and freelancers or contract language professionals, CLPs, which cover perhaps the widest array of players of them all. The Language Services Value Chain Each of these key players interact with each other in the language services value chain, which we will discuss further in a later chapter, but deserves a brief introduction here. The language services industry is multi-layered, as can be seen from Figure 3. Each layer represents another intermediary services provider, as we will discuss in greater detail later in this chapter. At first glance, it seems to just be an unnecessarily long chain of middlemen and outsourcing. One may ask that if a buyer needs translations, why wouldn't they just cut out the middlemen and hire translators directly? By doing this, they could cut out the middlemen and reduce costs. But this would be a mistake. There is a very good reason why the industry has evolved this way, and the most basic way to describe it is by the concept of core functions and added value. Figure 3, the language services value chain. This figure depicts the language services value chain as five layers. At the top, we see language services buyers, or LSBs. The next layer down shows massive multiple language service providers, or MMLSPs, and multiple language service providers, or MLSPs. The next layer down shows regional multiple language services providers, or RMLSPs, for each region. The next layer down shows local in-country single language service providers, or SLSPs. The last layer on the bottom shows contracted language professionals, or CLPs. Moving on from figure three. We need to clarify one thing up front. LSPs do not provide translation. They provide vendor management, project management, and sales. This may come as a shock to you. You may then ask why one would hire a language services company to provide translations if that is not even their core competency. The answer is because the industry is structured in such a way that each of those middlemen or LSPs add necessary value. As we can see in figure five, each company in the chain adds value through its core functions. Along the way, each LSP also marks up the price of their services a bit so as to make a margin. The total value added at each step also reflects the value, in the eyes of the customer that is, provided by the LSP through their experience and expertise, which make the value perception even higher than the price being paid. The language services value chain is the interconnected branching chain of buyers and suppliers that work together to deliver all of those language services to the end client. At the bottom, freelancers add value by providing translation. As these translations move up through the value chain on their way to the buyer, each supplier adds their own value to the process so that by the time it reaches the client, the total value is much higher than the original translations. This added value is at the heart of the language services industry. It is why LSBs are happy to pay higher prices to work with MMLSPs instead of working directly with translators. Figure 4. Each company in the value chain adds value through their core function and marks up price to make a margin. Figure 4 shows the relationship between the value, the customer price, the core functions, and the markup. This includes the LSP margin and the LSP cost. Figure five, each player in the industry contributes to the language services value chain. 
Figure 5 takes Figure 4 and expands it into a multi-layered diagram. This shows language services buyers at the top with contracted language professionals such as translators at the bottom. At each layer through the value chain as we move up, each layer adds value through their core functions. This value is then supplemented by the amount they choose to mark up. The total between the value added by the core functions and the value added by the markup equals the cost the next layer up is willing to incur for those services. Figure 5 is an excellent illustration of why multiple language services providers are able to charge more for the same translation than an individual contracted language professional such as a translator. Moving on from Figure 5. If this seems complicated, don't worry. We will be discussing in more detail and providing specific examples as we move on through this book.